Right now, Republicans make it official today, shut down Obamacare or will shut down the government. But the GOP is now a house divided, so the question is, what happens next? And what do Democrats think about all this? We're going to hear from Representative Frank Fallone, who says, folks on the other side of the aisle, they've been acting like kids. And later, guns and mental illness, as we have seen all too often, a toxic combination. But how do we prevent the two from mixing again? And can we do it before we have to suffer yet another mass shooting? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thanks so much for joining us this Friday evening, September 20th. We've got those heavy subjects and also some of the lighter stuff in the second half hour. But we start on Capitol Hill. And if we're talking about Congress, that can only mean, frankly, dysfunction with dangerous consequences. Well, today, House Republicans made their official offer here. They're threatening the nation's entire economy, essentially holding it hostage if the president doesn't capitulate and undo, or undo his signature health care law. Now, for more on a fluid situation, let's bring in our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. And at the close of the week, Andrew, if anybody thought, you know, cooler heads would prevail, think again. Well, we are a couple of steps closer to a government shutdown than we were before this day started, Rich. For weeks, it was a strategy that sounded good at Tea Party rallies and GOP town hall meetings, but that not many people seriously thought would come to pass. Today, House Republicans pushed through a vote aimed at giving the president a choice your government or your health care law. House Republicans did a victory lap. Uh -oh. This morning they passed a bill to keep the government up and running after funding runs out at the end of the month. The American people don't want the government shut down and they don't want Obamacare. Yeah. And that's the big catch. The bill completely defunds the implementation of the president's health care law. This law is a train wreck. It's time to stop this before it causes any more damage to American families and American businesses. House Republicans say they did their part to keep the government funded. Now it's time for the Senate to do the same. But the bill that passed today has no chance in the Senate. Any bill that defunds Obamacare is dead, dead. It's a waste of time. A majority of Americans don't like the health care law, but they don't think the government should be shut down in order to kill it. The standoff between House Republicans and the Democratic-controlled Senate and White House has sent Washington once again speeding towards an economic cliff. And looming right around the corner, the debt ceiling. If Congress doesn't raise the government spending limit, the U.S. could default on its bills. The American people have worked too hard for too long, digging out of a real crisis just to let politicians in Washington cause another crisis. So let's take this one crisis at a time. Let's say we take a look at the bill that the House passed today. It does two things, keeps the government open and it defunds Obamacare. Next week that bill heads to the Senate where the democratically led chamber will split that bill in half, giving senators the chance to vote on the keep the government open part, which most expect the Senate is going to pass. It's also expected the Senate will either reject or totally ignore the defund Obamacare part. If that is, the thing doesn't get filibustered in the entire process. Finally, the bill goes back to the House at that point. Would House Republicans, who to such a clear line on Obamacare today, vote to keep the government open without killing health care. If they do, Tea Party conservatives will be livid. If they don't, the government will be shut down. Now, we mentioned the possibility of a filibuster in the Senate. If there is one, it will be from Texas Republican Ted Cruz, who spent all summer yelling into every microphone and camera he could find that Republicans needed to do whatever it takes to kill Obamacare. And for Cruz, whatever it takes includes a government shutdown or a debt default. Until this week, when Cruz said, we don't have the votes in the Senate for a filibuster. That did not sit well with House Republicans, who now say Cruz has abandoned and abused them. We've, uh, we've kept the lid on uh, our anger in the House, as we were the punching bag and bullied by some of these Senate conservatives. You should have been on the floor or back in the cloakroom. There was, I mean, there was so much anger, so much frustration, because, again, we've been abused by these guys for so long. And uh, what, I, what, I, what I see happening now is people coming out and calling them out for the hypocrisy uh, of these big, tough conservatives who, uh, who know how to fight but will never get in the ring. Congressman Duffy not alone. Here's Long Island's Peter King. We are going to lose this, and we have so many winning issues against the president. I think he's a wing within our party, led by people like Ted Cruz, who have been really, as far as I'm concerned, carrying out a fraud with the people by somehow implying or even saying that this strategy is going to win. They know it's not going to win. When Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and Mike Lee fail in the Senate next week, maybe finally we Republicans will have ended their influence. It's, we as House Republicans should stop letting Ted Cruz set our agenda for us. He should stay in the Senate. He should keep quiet. And if he can deliver on this, 
that's fine. If he can't, then he should keep quiet from now on, and we shouldn't listen to him. So what should the rest of us make out of today's hardline House votes and the infighting among Republicans? That's what I asked New Jersey Congressman Frank Pallone. We spoke a couple of hours ago. Congressman, the House, specifically House Republicans, going on the record today saying we will shut down this government unless we defund Obamacare, while at the same time there's a circular firing squad, Republicans attacking each other, saying, no, no, we're not actually going to shut the government down. What's your takeaway with what happened today? I think that the Republican leadership is acting almost childish. I mean, in other words, they're saying that they don't want a, the government to operate because they don't like the health care reform. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. The health care reform was passed uh, three years ago. It's finally coming to fruition. Uh, it's going to uh, cover uh, 30, 40 million Americans that don't have health insurance. It's going to provide a good benefit package for people who may have insurance but don't have good benefits. It's going to make uh, health insurance affordable. I mean, I could go on and on. It's the law of the land, and you don't just say, well, I don't like the law, and therefore I'm going to shut the government down. This is about the budget. It's not about uh, the health care reform. I mean, the health care reform actually saves the government money and reduces the deficit. So there's no argument. It's just an ideology that they just don't believe that the government should be providing or helping with people's uh, health insurance. And, you know, they lost that battle. This is the law. Let's move on and work out an agreement on the budget so that the government can continue to operate. It, it, there's been no effort on the part of the Republican leadership to sit down with the Democrats in the House or with the Democrats in the Senate. They just say, here, here's our, uh, our uh, budget, uh, and uh, you have to take it or leave it, you know, my way or the highway. I mean, I, it's almost like a temper tantrum type of thing. Just from a, the straight politics of it, Congressman, a, a lot of folks say maybe the best thing that could happen for the president and for Democrats would be if Republicans took us over the cliff and, and shut the government down, that there'd be such a backlash against the GOP. Why not call their bluff and actually let them shut the government down? Because it's not a good thing. I mean, obviously, if the government shuts down vital services, I mean, for example, uh, the payment, uh, just as uh, one area, the payment of, uh, uh, of doctors under Medicare ceases. So, you know, doctors may decide that they don't want to see uh, Medicare patients anymore. Uh, you know, everything grinds to a halt. There's a real danger, whether it's Homeland Security or defense or whatever it is, of the programs that, you know, uh, f that uh, take care of people in need, like Meals on Wheels, uh, uh, senior centers. I mean, anything, uh, nutrition programs, uh, all these things come to a grinding halt. And it's not a good thing for the country or for the economy. You can find the full unedited interview with Congressman Pallone and all of our other RFL interviews on our YouTube page. Just search YouTube for Richard French to find a listing. Rich?